على محمد سيد الأنام وعلى آله الكرام وصحبه العظام وسلم تسليما كثيرا ما دام يجري هذا النظام وبعد قال تبارك وتعالى إن الذين قالوا ربنا الله ثم استقاموا تتنزل عليهم الملائكة ألا تخافوا ولا تحزنوا وأبشروا بالجنة التي كنتم توعدون وعن ثوبان رضي الله عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال استقيموا ولن تحصوا أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم Respected brothers, elders, mothers, sisters and youngsters Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we thank Him our creator, sustainer, cherisher, nourisher and the only entity entitled to worship and we send the choicest blessings upon the final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Alhamdulillah, the month of Ramadan has come to a completion and we also offered our Eid prayers and Alhamdulillah, the atmosphere of Eid is still alive and we see each other saying Eid Mubarak and greetings of Eid to each other and the Prophet peace and blessings upon him whenever he saw someone is smiling in this type of mood then he would say Allahu sinnakum May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow you to continue to smile and be in a joyful, pleasant state. So we make the very same supplication. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to always be steadfast on His teachings and be in a state of pleasure and joy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we look at the situation of the international Muslim community, we find there were numerous gatherings of Eid. And big and large small and united we see these groups perform the Eid prayers and alhamdulillah this time in North America most of the mainstream moon sighting organizations uh, announced the date of Eid to be yesterday Thursday so this brings further uh, unity and togetherness and we make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to continue this togetherness and this unity. Someone jokingly said at the Crescent Committee meeting that we attended, that you know sometimes there's so many different days of Eid, that even the devil, the shaitan doesn't know when he's going to be released. <laughs> so, alhamdulillah this time I'm sure he knew the date was Thursday. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from the devil and shaitan. And the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, has also made a mention regarding the day of Jum'ah, that it's a day of Eid. Yawmul Jum'ah, Yawmu Eidin. It's the day of Eid for the week. So, subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showering His mercy and His blessings upon us time after time. And we need to continue to draw from this mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, since this is the completion of the month of Ramadan, and we are now in the month of Shawwal, the Islamic lunar month of Shawwal, the first of Shawwal is the day of Eid, Eid al-Fitr. And primarily the concern that each and every believer should have at this point is all the good that I engaged in the month of Ramadan, how can I, I keep it alive? Even after the month of Ramadan has concluded. And this is why the ulama and the scholars, they say istiqama is a great bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Steadfastness, consistency is a great bounty from the Creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This morning, I was browsing the net and some news stories and I, on, online on the Toronto Star, I read an, uh, an interesting story and it was about a person who was an individual 17 year old who was racing on a motorcycle with a number of competitors so it was a legitimate race and the 17 year old was right at the finish line just right at the finish line and before this individual got to the finish line this was on a motorcycle motorcycle race the individual let go of a hand to celebrate or to show the victory that I'm at the finish line. And this individual lost the grip, fell off the motorcycle and many other competitors passed by and they won the race before this individual. So Ramadan is not the finish line. 
If we begin to celebrate that we've completed Ramadan and that's it, we bid farewell to our deeds, then it may be possible that before we get to the real finish line, which is death, which is maut, we may not be in that state to win and be victorious before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah protect us. So this is why the finish line is not the end of Ramadan or Eid al-Fitr. The finish line is when death comes to us. And that's why there is a famous saying in Arabic. Some, some scholars have also accredited this saying to the Prophet peace and blessings upon him in a weak narration. Nevertheless, whatever the case may be, the message is profound. Kama tuhyaun, the way you live, tamutun, that's the way you're going to die. The things you constantly do in life, then the day a person passes away, they're going to be doing one of those things. Kama tamutun tub'athun, and the manner in which death comes to you, that's the position that you will be resurrected in. So a person is doing good constantly then when death knocks at their door, they'll be doing the good. And on the day of resurrection, when they are told to rise and resurrect, they are resurrected, then they will be given the blessings of standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with those hallmarks of doing all those good deeds. So once again, we have bid certainly farewell to the month of Ramadan, but not to our good deeds. Famous saying that many of us say, you don't count your chickens before they hatch. Right? Because it's, we're not sure if all those eggs will hatch into chicks or chickens. So let us not, before entering the point of the finish line, become in a state of celebration or joy to the extent that we abandon everything that we were doing. So we need to be steadfast. This is a key message. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, he was asked the question, what is istiqama? What is being steadfast and consistent? Can you define it for us? So he said, Antastaqima ala al amri wa nahi. That you become so steadfast on everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded, and you abstain and refrain from everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has instructed one to refrain from. And then he said, Wala tarugh rawghan al thalab. And you don't swerve or you don't fall or you don't slip. He goes, just like the thalab, the fox would do. So Umar ibn al-Khattab is giving us this reminder that when we have the focus and the goal in mind, then we work towards that. We spend time, we put an effort, we make sacrifice because the goal is in front of us. A traveler who's come to a certain city or a certain land with a, with a certain objective and a goal. They will do whatever it takes to complete that goal and then they have to leave. They have to depart and return back to their home destination. So our home destination is paradise insha'Allah. And it is the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if we have this focus, the pleasure of Allah and paradise at all times, then whether it's Ramadan or whether it's Shawwal, whether we are at home or whether we are in the masjid, whether we are at work or whether we are on the streets, that goal and that objective is in front of us and all our efforts, all our movements, our intentions will be surrounding uh, that goal and that perspective. In the hadith that I quoted right at the beginning, the Prophet peace and blessings upon him says, Istaqimu walan tuhsu. He said, be steadfast and never count. Be steadfast and never count. Now the scholars, they get into a discussion. What is the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, explaining here, don't count. Because many of the actions of our ibadah, we need to count. For example, there are four rakahs. So we need to know whether we are doing four rakahs, or two rakahs, or three rakahs. So what is meant here by istaqimu walan tuhsu, that uh, be steadfast and don't count. The ulama, the scholars of Islam, they say what the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, is talking about here is that some of us, we become steadfast for a numbered counted days. So just because we're in Hajj, then we're the greatest, we're the greatest wali of Allah for that specific time of Hajj. Just because it's the month of Ramadan, then we're putting all our mind, soul, and body to the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we've counted the number of days of Ramadan. And then after Ramadan passes, after the Hajj season passes, 
or whatever the case may be, then we abandon those things that we were accustomed to during those counted days. So here the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, is indicating, istaqimu, be steadfast, walan tuhsu, don't count, in a way that you lose your istiqama, you lose your consistency. So indeed, this is a profound uh, example and a teaching. Now, how do, we be st- how do we become steadfast? Some quick tips we learn from the hadith of the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, as to how we can be steadfast. Number one, the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, has instructed that we make a resolution. We make intentions. Intentions have a very strong position in Islam. This is why you open majority of the books of hadith. Sahih al-Bukhari for example. The very first hadith, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ niyat. All actions are judged based on their intentions. So if a person has an intention, they have a resolve, they have made the intention that I'm not only going to limit my good deeds to the month of Ramadan, I'm going to do it even after Ramadan. That intention, that willpower, that resolve will allow the person bi'ithnillah to continue on the good deeds. And as I always mention, maybe because of Ramadan, the intensity was, was greater. So we're reciting more, we're standing more. The idea is we don't abandon completely the deed. So we, will, we may reduce the number of rakahs, we may reduce the number of pages that we're reciting, we may reduce the amount of charity that we're giving. However, we don't abandon the deed in totality. We continue to some degree or the other. So a person must have the resolve, they must have the willpower. I was reading an article about uh, these therapists, how they get people to accomplish their goals. And one of the therapists says, it's just one ingredient you need, one element you need, and that's willpower. And what is willpower? It, it starts from the intention. The ulama are asked, what is an intention? رَبْطُ الْقَلْبِ عَلَى الْعَمَلِ رَبْطُ الْقَلْبِ عَلَى الْعَمَلِ to tie the heart on an action. It has to come from the heart. So if a person doesn't verbalize an intention, that's fine. If a person doesn't say or articulate the, their intention, that's okay. As long as the intention, the resolve is in the heart, things will become easy. So this is the first step. The other step, the second step is that we need to schedule ourselves. Salah teaches us to schedule ourselves. We have five times daily prayer. One brother said it so jokingly as well, that you know, in, if you ask anyone the time for sunset in Ramadan, they'll tell you precisely, this minute and this second. But after Ramadan, you ask some brothers or sisters that when is Maghrib, when is sunset? I say, I don't know. So, Islam teaches us time management. Salah teaches us time management. Iftar teaches us time management. Suhoor teaches us to be precise with time. So when it comes to our consistency in good deeds, after we've made a resolve, we have to have a plan. We have to have a schedule. That this is the time of the day that I'm going to recite Qur'an. This is the time of the day that I'm going to uh, offer a few rakahs, nafil prayers. This is the specific time that I'm going to engage in learning and teaching. This is the time I'm going to help my family. This is the time I'm going to help my neighbor. So we, we should have a plan and a schedule. And living in North America, this is something that schedules and, and being on time and not missing your appointments. This is very valued. This is the teaching of Islam that many people practice. So we need to be, be, be scheduled. We need to have our plans in place. And then we will see that we will be able to be consistent with the good deeds that we've uh, been accustomed to during the month of Ramadan. Number three, we find in the narrations that the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, has indicated that for some reason or the other, if you fall or slip, you forget, you're unable to do it, then don't abandon it. Get back, right back up. Walk again. The Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, says in a narration of Sahih Muslim that if a person is so consistent with their good deeds, for example, their awrad, they have some recitations, some du'as they recite every single day. And for some reason or the other, they forgot it. They forgot to recite it one night or one morning. Or they're so consistent with their tahajjud, their qiyam, etc. And due to deep sleep, they were unable to get up. The Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, says that if this person makes it up during the day, 
then Allah will write for them as if they've performed the deed during that time that they usually do it. Because this person didn't intentionally abandon it. This person was still consistent, but for some reason, for some emergency, this person was unable to do it. So what do we learn from here? The Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, is indicating that if we slip, if we fall, if we forget, then we need to get right back up and, and do it. As one individual said, do something, do something good. And if you, if you do it, then you will find a way and a time to do it. But if you don't even want to do it, you don't even make a plan to do it, then you won't even find the time. One brother said, we got to take out the word busy from the dictionary. Everyone says they're busy. Right? So we have to find the time. Whatever is important for us, we find the time to do it. So we need to find the time to do these great deeds that we've been doing during the month of Ramadan. And if we forget perchance, or if we fall, or if we fail, let's get right back up and be consistent. And finally, one other thing we find in the narrations of the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, is we need to track our, our performance. We need to track and evaluate. The Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, many times he would gather the, the companions and he would ask them that how has the month been? How has the week been? I gave you this task, what's the report? What's the evaluation of that? And the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, would give recommendations to improve the situation. So, in the same way, we need to evaluate. One brother said it so nicely as well. He said that, you know what? Many times I want to do things and I try to justify. So I, I, I tell myself, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it next week. And then sooner or later it becomes a year and I haven't even started. So he said, I started tracking. I put on my calendar that when I, I have the intention to do it, so I'm going to make a little, make a half a square, little mark, half a square. And if I end up doing it, I'm going to complete the square. So on the, on the calendar, I notice that there are more half squares than completed squares. And then when I visualize that, I see that I'm not consistent at all. I have the intention every day to do it. But there are only seldom a few days that I'm actually doing it. So when he visualized this, it made, motivated him that he wanted to see on the calendar every single day a complete square. So this is motivation when we visualize ourselves. And many therapists will tell you that if you want to lose a bad habit, one of the things we need to do is visualize ourselves that if I didn't have that bad habit in my life, what a better person I would be. I would be a better person. So when we visualize ourselves at the end point, when we visualize ourselves that Allah is pleased with us, when we visualize ourselves that we'll be a better citizen, we'll be better believers, we'll be better human beings, then it'll be easier for us to remain consistent and do what is more important and leave aside distractions and things that would turn us away. So indeed, uh, we see that numerous deeds were performed in the month of Ramadan. And the key thing is that we want to remain steadfast. The Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, said, Kun miftahan lil khair. Always be a key to khair, to goodness. Wa kun mighlaqan lil shar. And always be a lock to evil. So a believer should be known for khair and for goodness throughout the year. And a believer should be known for stopping evil and staying away from all forms of bad habits and things that are not so productive for us and our lives and our communities and in relation to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has in instructed. And I've seen many, many brothers and sisters in the community, they've already made some resolutions. One brother I spoke to, he said, I volunteered in the month of Ramadan and I'm going to continue volunteering throughout the year. Another brother I spoke to recently, yesterday, he, he told me that, you know what, I'm, I was a heavy smoker. So I'm reducing and I was able to do it in the month of Ramadan. So I'm going to try slowly to reduce even further. So subhanAllah, this is the way. I met a young man. He said, I want to become a hafiz of the Qur'an. I'm reciting a taraweeh behind these young huffad. And I want to also do that and lead the taraweeh. And be, so I said, of course, you can also become a hafiz. It's just a matter of working at it. He said, I've already started. 
in the month of Ramadan, I've memorized this much and I'm going to continue and enroll in a program that will enable me to memorize the whole Quran. So this is the idea that we have the inspiration at these occasions, the month of Ramadan, blessed nights, when Hajj season comes, etc. And we need to take that as a springboard. And this is what it is. It's the time to recharge. It's the time to raise the bar and then remain consistent until the next charge, until the next Ramadan. The Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, says one Jummah to another is a means of charge, forgiveness of sins and numerous blessings. As long as we take care of the intervening period, one Ramadan to another is the same. One Hajj to another is the same. So these are blessed occasions. It's the time to springboard and raise the bar and remain consistent. We make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with istiqamah and consistency. May Allah accept all our good deeds. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala write for us all the blessings of the month of Ramadan and Eid al-Fitr. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all success of this life as well as the year after. Shaykh Yusuf Khandalwi said it also very nicely. He said, if you spend your entire life like how you spend the month of Ramadan, then when you pass away, then you will pass away like the moon of Eid. How much joy there is when you know that tomorrow is Eid. So when death comes to us, if we've spent our lives properly, then we will be in joy and happiness with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has stored for us. May Allah grant us that inshaAllah. So inshallah we're going to read the announcements jazakumullah khairan wa akhiru da'wan alhamdulillah rabbil alamin Alhamdulillah the collection last Friday for the Islamic Foundation